Well, hey everybody, John Rathlon here, and this is my review of New Japan Pro Wrestling's Best of Super Juniors Night 1 and 2 events. Yes, you're going to see Nights 1 and 2, Nights 3 and 4, Nights 5 and 6 in double reviews. I simply do not have the time to do individual reviews, so I'm having to double this stuff up when, you know, when I have the spare time. As far as 7 through 14, obviously I'll be reviewing the finals live myself. I mean, that that'll be, that will be pretty easy, and that one's going to be really detailed. But as for the rest of these reviews, if I have to double them up, I do apologize, but I hope you guys enjoy them nonetheless. Thank you guys for the continued support. But with 18 matches, 5A block, 5B block matches to close both shows, <clears throat> I got a lot to get into. So let's just get right on into it. So here we go with Ke uh, Kevin Kelly, Chris Charlton, Caprice Coleman on commentary for both shows. They did very well. Great banter with all three of them. We get Tai Chi and Doki. Doki, who is somebody that uh, Tai Chi helped train. And Doki went to Mexico, lear, you know, learn wrestling there also. So I'm not that familiar with him. He replaced El Desperado, while who has a broken jaw. Ren Narita replaced Flip Gordon, or vice versa. The bottom line is uh, Despi and uh, Flip Gordon were not able to be in the tournament. <clears throat> so Doki and Young Lion Ren Narita are in the tournament. Very little is known about Doki, but... Taichi and Doki face off against Ren Narita, Yota Suji. So it was what it was. Yota attacking Taichi could be an interesting feud. If Yota wasn't just a young lion, I, I'm not knocking him. If he was almost out of the young lion program, I'd like to see this for the Never Openweight Championship. Doki gets in. He takes over, has some flashes of brilliance. <clears throat> Narita and Doki have a battle to hype up their match that's going to happen on night two. Uh, Yota gets back in. Suplex de la Luna which beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful variation that uh, Doki does. Pins Yota for the one, two, three. So that was an interesting, um, interesting showing for him. And then we get Robbie Eagles, El Fantasmo, or ELP as he's being called, and Jado. So representing, representing Bullet Club versus Rocky Romero, Yuya Yamura, and Bandito. Bandito from Ring of Honor. Great guy to see live, by the way. I saw him live. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> and this is hyping up two more Night 2 matches that we're going to be seeing. Bandito and EOP starting off. Rocky and Robbie having a nice chop fest, hyping up their matches they're going to have uh, in Night 2. Kane usage, of course, Jotto involved. And <coughs> Bandito got in, hit some moves. Yuya got in. Everyone got in, but in the end, uh, Robbie ends up pinning Yuya Yamura for the 1-2-3. And it was a good showing for everybody. Then we get Yo and Shota. Yota, not Yo Tasuji. Actually, he was out there as a second at ringside. That's the thing about the young lines are always out there, right, like, shortly after their match. Or, like, they go... They have their match, and then they go shower, and then they get dressed again, and then they go back out there and be seconds. Amazing. <clears throat> uh, super tough, by the way, because Suzuki, thankfully, is not on this tour, so he's not throwing them around. But they face off against Juice and Taguchi. Jaguchi? I mean, I don't know what the heck you would call them. Comedy from uh, Taguchi and Juice. I know they're friends, but it would be a very interesting U.S. title feud. Uh, Yo and Taguchi are in. Juice and Shota are in. High angle Boston Crab, uh, much like Tenzon does. That's where Juice obviously learned it from, <clears throat> and he taps Shota. I'd like to see Shota and Hanare in the G1. I would really like to see that. I'm not saying either guy's going to... I mean, Hanare, I think, would get a couple wins. I don't think Shota would get too many wins, but it would still be nice because Shota is clearly advancing even from just six months ago. And then, video package plays about this person in a bar that's targeting Juice. Who's targeting Juice? Oka, Chris Brooks, I believe somebody said, or somebody else. Leave, let me know in the comments who the fuck you think it is. But then we had Hanari and Will Osprey versus Naito and Bushi <coughs> hyping up um, Osprey and Bushi facing off on night two. And gee, I wonder who took the pin. It was Hanari. Hanari took the pin. The match was fine. It, it was good. Hanari and Naito having a good scrap and everything. Bushi and Osprey getting some good moves in on each other. <coughs> Bad apron spot DDT. Because as we know, the apron is the hardest part of the ring. But also. Osprey, stop hating your own neck like that. We want you to be able to walk by three. We want every fan I don't like Osprey's gonna watch this, but every fan wants you to be able to walk for the rest of your life. We don't want you to keep crushing your own head. The human neck isn't meant to bend that way. But in the end, Destino for the one, two, three. I'm not gonna try to do that like Kevin Kelly, my probably one of my favorite wrestling commentators uh, currently going. <laughs> Him and Morrow. I mean, as far as like lead commentators. But yes, Destino pins Hanari. I still want to see Hanari in the G1, and I want to see Shota in there. So then we get the first of the A-block action. Tiger Mask versus Taka Michinoku. 240-something guys. I mean, Taka's more on the lower spectrum because I think he's like 41, and nothing against him. They both still move really well. They're in tremendous shape. <laughs> but this is a 
not really shockingly, a, a slower paced match. Uh, Taka with knee focus, there was nice figure four spots. Tiger does come back. There were some cool submissions and everything. Tiger suplex in the end, one, two, three. Tiger mask gets two points. Not a bad match. It wasn't great, but it, it was a fine way to kick it off. <clears throat> and then uh, Teton, I call him Titan. I'm just going to call him Titan, Teton. Because Teton, it sounds dirty. I'm going to call him that, but it sounds so fucking dirty. Versus uh, Kanemaru. And, of course, you know, you're kind of thinking Kanemaru is going to find a way to get, um, you know, use heel tactics, beat him up and everything. And he does, for the most part. Don't get me wrong. <coughs> Quick start. DDT on the floor. Uh, Kanemaru did do some good grounding and everything. Uh, there were some cool dives. Deep impact. You know, that, that move off the ropes that Kanemaru does. But that was only for two. And Tetonics. Sounds so dirty. Teton sounds so dirty. But in the end, it was a nice submission variation into a pin. One, two, three. Teton gets... God damn it, I gotta find a different way to call him that. Um, gets the victory. I don't know why it sounds so dirty to me, but it just does. That was a fine match. Uh, Kanemaru, at this point, I think is kind of on the downside of his career, but is still able to move really well and put on a good performance. Oh, and he did... <clears throat> and, of course, he did the alcohol spot, and that didn't end up working out. So then we get Marty Skrull versus Jonathan Gresham. Yes, shut up and take my money. More of it. Well, New Japan already has my money, but still... This is this is the kind of variations I'd like to see in the best of Super Juniors. And with two submission-based guys that can also fly pretty well, you know, when, when needed, <clears throat> these two guys did really well. Great mix of skills. Skrull taking over. It was a nice uh, delayed suplex. Pinfalls, um, you know, pinfall into, like, tumbleweed, you know, you know, just the variation of the pinfall. One, one, one. They're just, like, rotating around and everything, kind of like sunset flip type stuff. It's a nice ankle lock transition. The finger snaps pop. You know, of course, that's what you're going to get with Marty Skrull. <laughs> um, chicken wing and then a black plague. One, two, three. Gresham had a good showing, but the, the finger popping is what really did in because he couldn't do the grasp and everything for his submission. Still a good showing by Gresham. Skrull gets two points. And then we get Show and Shingo. Woo! By the way, Jen, thanks for sending me this. I really appreciate it. But again... Ooh, this match, sweet Jesus, Show and Shingo. If you watch nothing else from night one, watch this motherfucking match. Good grief. I loved it. Now, I watched most of night one before I went to work uh, yesterday. <coughs> and unfortunately, I had to miss the main event and then watch it later. But my God, my God, this was so great. I mean, Show dyeing his hair black back to, I think, his young lion days. I saw some footage of that. And this was just, I mean, it was absolutely great. These two had faced off in variations where Pogni 3K versus uh, Shingo and Bushi, and I talked shit about those teams facing off so goddamn much. But oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, this match. I mean, I'm not even going to be able to describe everything that fucking happened in it, but it's just great. The uh, show was incredibly focused. I mean, he wanted to prove that he belonged, that even though he's, you know, he's bigger than Yo, obviously. Uh, not nothing against Yo, but Sho's obviously the stronger of the two. He wanted to prove to Shingo that he, that he <coughs> could, you know, match strength with him. Uh, Shingo takes over after there was a nice arm focus by Sho. And the way to use submission skills, a commentators alluded to the fact that Shingo may have problems with submission wrestling. That Shingo himself said something about that, and that was something that people gravitated to. It's a really dumb thing for people to say that, hey, yeah, I'm worried about facing submission wrestlers. Maybe don't fucking say that. I'm kidding. And it's a way to play up the story and everything. And they treat it like a sport over there. But it's just, maybe don't say that. But the whole point is, the beautiful delayed uh, or deadlift suplex from Shingo for two. Great exchanges. I mean, there is some pumping bombers, you know, pumping bomber clotheslines. <laughs> Um, last ride, you know, double knees, that, everything, the, all the moves were fucking impactful, everything was spectacular, this, the near falls, everything, I thought show had the victory, but nope, in the end, last of the dragons, one, two, three, <clears throat> and Shingo gets the victory, so, yeah, that's exactly, this was the match of the tournament so far, I know we're only two nights in, nothing even on night two compared to how this was, this was Fucking spectacular. Check out Shingo and Show, And then Dragon Lee versus Taiji Ishimori. Big fight feel. The problem is, you've seen it before. <clears throat> we just saw it, like, recently on the Dantaku tour. Not that it's bad. This was very good. And the question is, okay, would Dragon Lee be able to run the table and everything as champion? Or, you know, who would get victories over him and possibly get title shots later? Nice submissions. Ishimori did ground lead. There were some great strikes, some neck focus. <clears throat> um... 
you know, and mask, and of course going for Dragon Lee's mask because that's such a great idea. Go for that. Dragon Lee does come back quick. Suicide dies. I mean, really, that, that guy's just super smooth. <clears throat> LaBelle Lock by Ishimori. More strikes, a spike DDT. Uh, dueling poison ranas, you know, the reverse ranas. But in the end, Bloody Cross for the 1 2 3. Ishimori gets the victory. Ishimori pins the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. Could we see Ishimori possibly get a chance there? <laughs> Who knows? Now, I will say this, night one, B for sure because of Sho and uh, Shingo, and you can check out the poll, it's somewhere up there or whatever. In fact, I always put the polls for both uh, night one and two, but yeah, that was absolute, that, that was great. Sho and Shingo was fucking tremendous, and now I'm going to get into night two right after this short break. And folks, after that quick break, a quick short break, it's supposed to a long quick break, we are back with night two, meaning me, because I'm the only one here. <clears throat> but we start off with, you know, now it's B block action after A block action. Once again, please check out Sho and Shingo from night one. We then get Taka, Taichi, and Kanemaru versus Tiger Mask, Jonathan Gresham, and Yota Suji. G. I I wonder who's going to take the pin. Yota. It was Yota that took the pin. But, um, well, took the fall. Block preview matches, uh, Taka and Gresham having a good grapple. Gresham got beat up a bit. We then get Tiger Mask in. Yota got in. <clears throat> and then Yota submits, his, uh, submits to Taichi's stretch. Have fun on seeing that. Um, then they ripped off, then, uh, Tiger and, or Tiger Mask, Mask got ripped off. Oh, that, you don't fucking do that. You don't fucking do that to a mass wrestler. But still, this was enjoyable. <clears throat> Fine opening match. And then we get Shota and Sho versus Dragon Lee and Juice. And, you know, who wants to face Juice? Because they show the video before the match. Who the fuck knows? Lee and Sho having a nice battle. Shota and Juice, you know. More Shota and Lee. This was fine. And again, it ended in a high angle Boston Crab and Shota taps. I think that they're going to go with Shota possibly challenging Juice at some point. I mean, I know he's a young line, but on excursion, you know, it, he could go on excursion. He could come back. Juice could have another championship reign and we could see Shota challenging him. I think they got a bright, bright future with, uh, with Shota. <clears throat> they got a bright future with a lot of these guys. Anyway, then we get uh, Marty, so yeah, they have a pretty short match. And then we get Marty Scroll and Brody King versus Taiji Ishimori and Gato. Yes, Gato wrestling. Whatever. I, I know the whole point as to why he was wrestling. But um, Brody King, I've seen live. Brody King's fucking ridiculous with how agile the guy is. The guy is so damn smooth with how big he is. It's amazing how well he moves. <laughs> uh, it was mainly hype for Scroll and Ishimori. Gato did get in and get in some dirty shots. Brody got in illegally, but was just hitting some cool moves. And a Black Plague pins Gato. It, it was fine. It was, it was fine. It, it was the shortest tag match easily. It went on probably about two minutes longer than it needed to because Gato really can't work. I mean, he's a good heel. He just really can't wrestle anymore. <laughs> but it was what it was. Naito and Shingo versus Teton. God damn it. I got to come up with a different way to say that. I, it, Titan. I'm just going to call him Titan. I'm sorry. I'm just going to do that because otherwise it sounds dirty. So uh, Titan and Hanare. Um, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, actually, I think, actually, I think Titan or Teton, I'm just going to say it. Teton and Hanare <coughs> could be an interesting team if they ever teamed up on like any other tours. Like, honestly, I think they'd be pretty good, but I still want to see Hanare and Jeff Cobb team up in World Tag League later this year. So it was Shingo and Teton hype. Um, Hanare and Naito got in. Hanare got beat up a bit. He did get in some good shots. And then in the end, Destino pins Hanare. So pretty much a repeat of the match that you saw from night one. And then we get a uh, block action happening. We get B block action. <clears throat> Doki with Tai Chi and Doki Doki morning, like, you know, baby metal versus Ren Narita. Good stuff. I mean, you know, Ren showing, you know, some good fire and everything, especially for a 21 year old uh, kid. I mean, I know I say kid, but he's really impressive. Hits some very, very good moves. There was chair usage outside into the crowd. Doki dominates at first. Ren does come back. <clears throat> Cloverleaf by Narita. That was pretty goddamn impressive. Oh, look, folks, I have somebody to bring on camera. See, I, I wonder what... Now, what did you think of Ren Narita? Hmm? You think Ren Narita did good? You think so? Yeah, Ren Narita ends up coming back. That cloverleaf is fucking beautiful. And then we get uh, close near falls, but the suplex de la luna, one, two, three, and Doki gets two points. So then we get Robbie Eagles versus Rocky Romero. I'm just going to hold this cat. By the way, this is a rescue cat. This is Sir, if you're unfamiliar with the channel. I got him about a month or a year and a half ago. And he's a little bitch. But anyway, um, he's, actually, he's actually a great cat. 
He's a great cat. But anyway, then um, starts off fast. You know, we get Rocky and uh, Robbie Eagles having a great scrap. These guys work really goddamn well together. Uh, Rocky does come back, you know, with some great strikes and everything. The knee focus by Robbie actually comes into play much later into this match, <laughs> or actually throughout the match, but especially much later. Um, forever clotheslines, but the knee buckles. Rocky can't hit more than like about three. <clears throat> and then really close near falls, Ron Miller special, one, two, three, you know, just the, the knee bar and everything that he hits. Robbie Eagles, by the way, saw him live. Fucking ridiculous as well. This was a good match. I liked seeing that Rocky, you know, really obviously has the Japanese crowd on his side. He's really impressive and <laughs> did very, very well here. I was pretty, I was very impressed with the match. Um, Rocky, tremendous wrestler, tremendous commentator. Robbie, sky is the limit for, I mean, you know, obviously sniper of the sky. Sky is the limit for the guy. He is really, really good. And then we get Bandito versus ELP. At one point, ELP, uh, El Phantasmo, by the way, flips off a fan. A kid. I can appreciate that. That That is great. Um, I don't like kids, but not just kids. It, it was, it was. I, th I think also, like, I, it looked like he was flipping off a bit. I think he was flipping off a kid that was actually behind. They kept cheering for Bandito. Cause, but, I mean, it was what it was. The crowd was, like, deathly silent, though. It was actually kind of amazing. Uh, but starts with a great agility, a suicide dive by ELP. I mean, he changes direction, like Bandito gets out of the way, and ELP is like, nope, I will dive out there, and then he flips off the fan soon after that. Um, great strike exchange, great pop-up cutter <coughs> by um, by Bandito. That was really cool. Uh, fall-away slam, kind of moonsault. Well, mainly fall-away slam off the top. That was very impressive by Bandito. But ELP gets a win. Greetings from something park. I don't actually know. I didn't actually catch the name. Chris Charlton said it, and I kind of missed what it was. But that was pretty impressive. <laughs> Good match. Really did enjoy it. And we get Osprey versus Bushi. Enjoyable. Bushi did upset Will Osprey last year in the uh, in the uh, Best of Super Juniors, which I actually forgot about. But to be fair, it's a lot of fucking wrestling to remember. Um, but, you know, got dirty really quickly after some good agility exchanges. <coughs> Osprey did hurt his neck, and that was the main focus of this Bushi hitting some, you know, hit, you know, just cranking on the neck, doing some great submissions, all that great chop fest. Bushi with more neck focus, some great strikes, close near falls. Just, you know, Bushi like weakening Osprey, just weakening, beating him down, beating him down. Osprey also hitting some good moves as well. Osprey lands on his feet after like this great, you know, Hurricanrana off. Almost lands like kind of like where he, he used the power of his ass to spring back up. But then the DDT into the apron again, which as we know is the hardest part of the ring. Please stop doing the apron spots. <clears throat> and then we get a missed attempt being stopped. Bushi's missed sprays up into the air away from everybody. Hidden blade elbow. St uh, Stormbreaker. One, two, three. Will Osprey gets two points. Bushi, probably the best Bushi has looked in a singles match in months. That, that I can recall. I, I know Bushi is traditionally in tag teams. This is probably the best I've seen Bushi look in a while. And then we get the uh, the end. We get the finishing match. You know, the main event match. Yo versus Taguchi. This was a good match. I don't know if it was main event worthy. But see, that's the problem. It's like I, the action in A Block. I think A Block's going to outshine B Block more. That just usually is how it ends up being. One block just slightly outshines the other. Whenever it's like, you know, best Super Juniors or G1, that kind of stuff. That's going to be interesting about G1 later this year. But anyway, <clears throat> very good. Much more of a ground-based match than I expected. Very good groundwork. Yo playing dirty at some points. Beating up to Gucci outside. Yo not playing around. Uh, yo, not Yo-Yo Ma, but anyway. Um, Yo does ground to Gucci. To Gucci does come back with some good with some good wrestling. You know, hitting some impressive submissions of his own. Yo did have some good knee work later on. To Gucci did get the ankle lock, and a variation of the Dodon ends up pinning Yo for the one two three. So To Gucci gets two points. To Gucci could be <coughs> doing could end up doing better than he did last year because I think he ended up with six points, which is the lowest he'd had in a while for best of super juniors. But yeah, I'll say B for that. That was pretty impressive. This was. It was the weaker of the two. Sho and Shingo pretty much <coughs> made that made uh, Unite One get a B or get a B, and then um, yeah, so there was that. So that's all I really have to say about that. But before I go, folks, somebody wants to say goodbye. <coughs> he, he's got Shingo winning, by the way. You got Shingo winning, Shingo.
Okay. Anyway, folks, agree, disagree with what I said. Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Redland. This is Sir. Make sure to adopt. Make sure to adopt pets. And I will see you soon.